So this morning we're, excuse me, I'm not used to using this microphone. <laughs> this morning we want to welcome Dr. Raj Parti. Many of you met him uh, months ago when he was uh, baptized here, and then a few months ago with Walter, uh, he became a member of our community. Raj is a retired anesthesiologist, retired from that to, to shift into a spiritual perspective and vocation. He is now a Unity licensed teacher in training. And so with that, I'm going to let Raj give the, tell you the rest of his story. So Raj Party. You know, she forgot to tell you my last name is Party, Dr. Party. And when I was an anesthesiologist, my patients didn't believe that I'm uh, Party as my last name. They used to think I gave that name to myself because I was going to give them nitrous and morphine, the good stuff. <laughs> I had to have nurse tell them, no, he is a doctor. You know, it was Christmas Eve of 2010 and I was being wheeled to surgery in UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles. And then during surgery, I had a near-death experience which totally transformed me, changed the trajectory of my life, relationship with my wife, what I drove, where I lived, what even I ate, everything changed. Now, before I can go and tell you what changed, I want to take you my life before near-death experience. I was born and raised in a middle-class family in India. My father was an air traffic controller, and my mother was an English teacher. I was an average student, but then, in my 10th grade, I got into bad company. Real bad company, you know, smoking, drinking, that I failed. And then my mother came to meet the vice principal and wanted to change my major. I wanted to change it to biology. And how so rude the vice principal was, Mr. Sina, I still remember the whole scene. And he said, do you think your uh, son will be a doctor one day? And he made my mother cry. I still remember her face with the tears down her eyes. And that I resolved to wipe my mother's tears, I will be a doctor one day. I worked very hard and became the best student in the class and got into three medical schools. And then when I was in medical school, in the second year, you know, dissections and everything, I started questioning what is life. I read Hinduism books, I even read Islam and Christianity. I even ran away from my house to become a monk. But then the head uh, a monk of the monastery in Himalaya said, no, go back and finish your medical school and then come back. But the way life worked, after medical school, my sister sponsored me to come to America and then I came to America. I passed the exams to become a doctor in America. And then the American dream, the Peru American dream, bit me. And, and it became an extreme American dream to get money, to get success, and have expensive cars. So much so, in the beginning, I did periodic residency. But they make the least amount of money. So I switched to anesthesia because anesthesiologists make double the British earnings make. And I moved to Bakersfield. I became a chief of anesthesia there. I was living in a 10,000 square foot house on the golf course and lake. I was living the high life. You know, I had expensive cars. I was taking expensive vacations. And for SUV, I had a Hummer. It was only giving eight miles per gallon, 
where I didn't care. I could afford it. And then I had prostate cancer. It was shocking. And during surgery for prostate cancer, I had complications. I had sepsis, infection, and that's when I died during surgery. And during surgery, my consciousness separated from my body. And after about 15 minutes, I saw the clock on the wall. That's how I remember the time. I saw myself floating near the ceiling. I could hear the surgeons and the anesthesiologists talking about things, you know. And anesthesiologists even told a joke. And I cannot tell you the joke, though I remember it, because it was not a clean joke. <laughs> and it's very common in OR. Part of anesthesia's job is to keep the atmosphere light. And from there, my consciousness, I could say, went to heaven, but it didn't. It went to hellish realm. But there were souls who were crying, and they were what, being beaten. And I was shocked, and I was crying myself, why am I here? And then the realization was given to me, because I have not been a good person. I have been using my patients to make money, not really caring for them from heart. And I have been living a very materialistic life. And I sometimes wonder, the doctor who wanted to become a monk and wanted to serve the poor, from there he became this doctor who wants to just make money and live the high life. You know, America changed me. It happens to a lot of immigrants. And then my consciousness, as I told you, from the hellish realm, I started crying, asking for help. And my father, who had been very strict with me in my childhood, was, who had beaten me a few times, I still remember a few beatings, came and took me with a finger towards a tunnel. And I realized my father really loved me, but he could not show his love to me. And I forgave him, and he forgave me. My hard relationship with him was cured. I was touched by his love. And then he took me to a tunnel in the tunnel, I had two major things. A review of my present life. You know, 360 degree review of my present life. How I have been good to the people around me and how I have been bad to the people and what I could learn from that. Most amazing was I was shown two past lives. And one of the past lives, I was a farmer in medieval Europe and I was whipping the soldiers, the far, uh, whipping the farmers, and my soldiers were whipping the farmers. And in this life, before surgery, I used to have pain in my right, eye, uh, right arm, and I was not even able to work. So I asked forgiveness from the farmers in my near-death experience in the past life. And when I woke up, my pain went away. So forgiveness is a very powerful thing. It's never late to ask forgiveness. You know, if you don't even believe in the past life, but believe past in the present life, forgiveness is a very powerful thing. And from there, on the other side of the tunnel, I was greeted by two angelic beings. I knew about angels, but I didn't know which angel is which angel. And they telepathically told me one was Michael, one was Raphael. From Michael was blue, Raphael was greenish, and Raphael made sense because he was 
the angel later on I found out for doctors and for healing. And they guided me above a meadow and where a clear stream was flowing. And I was present in, of a light. And the light was like thousand suns. But it was not hurting the eyes. And then when I read my Indian book, Gita, the Lord Krishna describes that in Gita when he was showing the, the nature of God to Arjuna. Thousand suns. The nature of divine. I was in bliss, but then I was told I have to go back and my life will change. So I woke up with a jolt in emergency room and then I just wanted to go down on my knees and thank for the experience. But the Raj who went to sleep, I call him Raj 1.0. Uh, and the Raj who woke up, I call him Raj 2.0. <laughs> they became two different be beings. So much so, I sold my house, moved to a smaller house. I sold my BMW, the lease expired. Normally when the lease expired, I bought another car, either, you know, Porsche or something, I rotated cars. But I bought a Toyota Camry. I sold my Hummer. So my life literally and figuratively went from Hummer to hybrid. <laughs> my nature changed. And then I was told to become a healer, to move away from anesthesia. So I left my very lucrative job as an anesthesiologist to become a healer. What I had been told to practice consciousness-based healing, but I really didn't know what consciousness-based healing was. Consciousness-based healing is restoring our connection, our consciousness, with the divine consciousness. Its wholeness is not a cure. As Myrtle Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, said, I'm a child of God. I cannot be sick. I don't inherit sickness. That is, in a nutshell, a consciousness-based healing. To find the consciousness, your wholeness within. It won't cure you, but you will learn to be healed. They are two different things. And I was guided by angels towards Jesus. And the light I had felt in my near-death experience, I had felt the presence of Jesus that time. I didn't see him as such, but I had felt the Jesus telepathically. And the same Jesus, the angels guided me during my vision one time. And they guided me that I should accept Christianity. And then after my that dream vision, I looked for Christianity in my local area. I live in Aptos. So there is a church, Twin Lakes. And I approached them. And they were having baptism in a week. And I was very excited. So I got baptized in the ocean. You know, but it was scary. I didn't know how to swim. <laughs> so there were two people in front of me, two people behind me to prevent from me floating away. It was scary. <laughs> and when the traditional Christianity did not resonate with me, 
and then the angels guided me towards new thought and I discovered unity which you all know was founded by Charles Fillmore and his wife Myrtle Fillmore and during the study of Christianity 12, I discovered 12 powers and right now I did it as a course for my study for licensed unity teacher which I am right now on that path and I have applied to the ministerial school I am on a path of spirituality these 12 powers are your inner resources faculties of your mind of your consciousness they can be used to restore your connection with the divine to heal your pro, uh, issues in life you must have got a handout and uh, Reverend Vicky taught this few years back and she even has on the wall you know you can see it renunciation order faith power and in this handout I have listed the powers very very briefly Charles Fillmore showed them in different parts of the body just like chakras and chakras are a different system of the body different you know seven chakras but he discovered 12 areas called chakras I'll brief, uh, briefly read faith which is located you can do it with me on top of your head in the pineal gland which is in the center of the brain its ability to believe with confidence strength ability to endure resilient and preserve it is in the small of the back love ability to attract desire harmonize located at the back of the heart dominion ability to claim mastery and control located in the larynx a root of the tongue it was also called power of power imagination ability to visual, visualize think creatively located between the eyes dominion ability to claim mastery and control you know, I did this located in the larynx and root of the tongue understanding ability to comprehend interpret what you know located in the front brain discernment ability to evaluate judge wisely located in the solar plexus will ability to choose to act decide located in the center of the front brain here we have a lot of powers in the brain order ability to organize prioritize adjust located in the back of the navel release ability to discard let go located in the lower intestinal region zeal ability to be passionate be enthusiastic motivated located in the brain stem back of the neck and finally life ability to enliven and make whole vitalize located in the reproductive center and this can be used to heal your life different aspects and I used it to heal my marriage I had been married that time 25 years mine was a semi arranged marriage I had only two weeks during my residency to get married my father had selected five girls and my wife was number five we talked for half an hour she met my tick mark all the boxes beautiful educated she's a dentist you know who loves to travel who cooks good I said yeah let's get married So I saw her for the first time on 29th January 
got engaged on 31st January and got married on 12th February. I only had two weeks vacation. <laughs> and then my mother says, Son, I want to become a grandmother soon. She didn't have any grandchildren. Like Vicky said, you know, how precious the grandkids are. I said, don't worry, Mama, I'm working very hard. <laughs> and we had a baby boy nine months, nine days later. <laughs> so I didn't work very hard. You know, after my near-death experience, I wrote a book, Dying to Wake Up. You know, I was a changed man. I was no more that materialistic go-getter to be very you know, aggressive. You know, people who have near-death experience, they have a double the divorce rate of regular people because they're a changed person. So I was a changed man. I didn't care for my wife while I was pursuing, publicizing my book. Just a simple incident. We were in a mall, and I said, do you want coffee? And I said, I asked her, what do you want for coffee? She said, yes. She said, don't you know that we've been married for 25 years, what I like? I should have known that she won't like coffee latte. Now, these are small things count. It's not you have to be a, give a diamond ring on Valentine's Day and that's enough. But I had moved away from that. As Mother Teresa said, we all cannot do great things, but we all can do little things with great love. And then my marriage was still going downhill. We came one signature short of divorce. One signature. I used these 12 powers to repair my marriage. I used all of them, and, but I will only describe the major ones with a shortage of time. I used imagination. I began with using my imagination to visualize what healing of our relationship would look like. I even made a vision board of us holding hand, getting old together, going for vacations. We just returned from New England. We had gone there to visit the fall. It was amazing. The colors of trees changing colors, and we went to New Hampshire, Vermont. We even drove to the Canadian border, you know. And then faith. I had full faith that it could be healed. I asked myself how I would feel if the relationship was restored to wholeness. And I began to practice feeling that way. That is faith in action. Because just knowing the powers in life is not enough. It's similar to the fifth principle of unity. Just knowing the things is not enough, but you have to put them in action. You have to meditate. You have to pray. And understanding. I discerned through my understanding what needs to change. I started to see relationship through my wife's point of view and understood where she was coming from. She felt neglected. And then I used will to decide to stay and to do what was necessary for healing. I became willing to make changes. I had discerned that there was a turning point for me as I committed to working on a relationship. And then I used zeal. I became very passionate of establish, establishing the health, wholeness, and well-being. I had envisioned 
to have the best relationship possible using my power of zeal. Then I use the power of power by becoming very mindful of the power of my words. And that's why the power is in the throat and the back of the tongue. What I say. And to speak only words of love, truth, respect and kindness towards my wife. And the main thing is, I consulted in my heart, what would love do? My heart began to open and continue to open wider and wider in tenderness and gratitude. So did her heart. As Gandhi said, be the change you want others to be. I felt deep love rise up from within along with a great desire for health and wholeness of a relationship to be restored. My heart was longing to be in love in action, to create a wonderful, mutually respecting, caring and loving relationship with my wife. I wrote these three things in a specific order because respect, caring, loving, all these three things are important, not just love. You have to respect the person, you have to care for them, and then the love bears fruits. Wisdom, I used for guidance from my intuitive wisdom as what I should do and was shown the way of, to love, lovingly tend to a relationship that could nurture it back to health and wholeness. Order, you know, order, in, like in nature, there's order, you know, how the planets go around and how the seasons follow, that's all order. Order showed me the steps to bring forth the change, planting seeds of love, watering them with kindness, nursing them with respect, weeding out any unloving behavior. The work had to be done daily, putting water at night, on our bed stand. It took self-discipline to continue taking those steps. She loves one small thing, that every night she drinks water. And she loves it when I put the water by her bed stand, nightstand. So I made it a habit to put water by her nightstand. As I said, small things count. She feels love. And then strength. There is where the power of strength comes in. Endurance, resolve, patience, perseverance. You will have setbacks. But the strength makes you persevere. Have patience and resolve. And elimination was one of the biggest uh, like superpower I used. Because elimination is forgiveness of letting go. I forgave myself for things I had done wrong in my life. I forgave her for things she had done wrong in her life. And she forgave me. It was a mutually forgiving, mutually releasing what was not serving us. And life, the last power is life. Through self-compassion, I finally was able to let go of self-condemnation when I did a whole new world opened up for us in our relationship. So now I'm very happy to say my marriage is the best marriage we have in 35 years. And the things... And all the three things, I had checked the boxes in the... When I decided to get married in half an hour, are coming through. <laughs> you know. And now we love to travel. She cooks very good. She didn't know cooking before marriage that much, but she said she loves food. She's a foodie. And, now, and it's wonderful. And on the professional side, as I said, I'm on the LUT path, licensed unity teacher and I have applied to the ministerial school. And one day, 
hopefully I qualify for the ministry school and help people heal. My passion became I help I help I heal myself by helping others heal. That's my passion. I'm being selfish by helping heal others heal. I'm healing myself. Now, in my previous life, I used to put people to sleep. Now I wake them up. <laughs> Thank you. do a small meditation to, to, for the 12 powers so they can become more enlivened in your bodies. Take a moment to consciously awaken and call forth each of the 12 inner resources that are waiting, waiting within you, us to be expressed. I invite you to relax into your seat and let go of any cares and worries you may have brought with you. We are now in the presence of pure being. We align ourselves with the universe consciousness within us. Allow it to be expressed through and as us. Feel your divine connection with the presence as it moves through you, bathing every cell of your body with a deep healing peace. And from this place of peace, we awaken each of the twelve powers, twelve gifts of spirit. We move our attention to the crown of the head and become aware as it is awakened from the sacred presence. We feel the healing energy of the One. 
life as it pours forth awakening each power within us move your attention to the center of your head as you call forth faith faculty faith is ability to say yes to life now focus your eyes at at the third eye as you bring your imagination faculty to life imagination is our ability to form our world to fashion our world from the creative power of the mind move up to the middle of the forehead and become aware of the powers of understanding and will moving beyond intellectual knowing we use our power of understanding to go right to the source of all knowledge as we align our will with the oneness of life we are guided to take right action move to the throat become aware of power of the spoken word as we speak with authority we make thoughts real now move to the back of the neck and become aware of the power of zeal enthusiasm for god feel the energy of divine as as it fills you now center your attention on your heart space as you become aware of the power of love love is the great harmonizing force of the universe move your awareness to the solar plexus the seat of wisdom wisdom is our ability to discern make decisions guided by spirit focus on the small of your back as you awaken your strength faculty strength eternally enduring patient the sustaining energy of spirit as we turn our attention to the navel we affirm divine order harmony and balance give us the ability to act from a central place as we move to the base of the spine we call on the power of elimination we are able to release that which needs to be released from our life let go and let god at the lower abdomen is a life center the pure restorative cleaning life of god flows through us now through this life we manifest the truth wholeness vitality and creativity are restored and now return your attention once again to the crown the center of awakening and feel your body alive and filled with the vibrational signature of oneness as we enter the silence we give thanks for this inner resources gifts of spirits that can restore our connection to the one life that lives through and as each of one of us and so it is amen